And with that, let's let's continue. Kirill. Thanks, Lucas, for the introduction. My name is Kirill Müller. I'm uh, presenting a project with the R Consortium, a uh, joint profiling of native R code. It will be a rather short presentation, so we have plenty of time for discussion, hopefully, and I'm looking forward to uh, your input. Very uh, serious. So, profiling, that's, Wikipedia defines it as the dynamic program analysis measures frequency and duration of function calls and we use it to aid program optimizations. Now, you remember the three rules of optimization, the first two were don't, and the third was, well, do if, if you must and if you know what to do, if you know where to optimize, and this is where a profile can help. Now, there are various ways of doing code profiling. Uh, one way is to do it manually, like insert code that would write to a file, write some output, to give you an idea which, which parts of the code take honest. We would rather have an automatic solution that you can apply just to your current code base without having to uh, do this. Now, instrumentation is also possible in an automated way. There are tools like uh, Callgrind that would look into the compiled code, insert these code pieces that, that, that would record time information and then later help you see where uh, the problems are. I think this isn't the best solution for R. Uh, I'm just unsure if this would work for profiling a package without also having profiling of the main R executable enabled. We'd have to try there. Uh, I've, I've just seen today there is an, an instrumented version of R but this is uh, rather old now. Uh, I'm more looking into sampling profiles. This would interrupt your program at predefined intervals, look at the call stack, and uh, record it, and then allow you to uh, analyze, to see which parts of your code take most of the time. This is an approximation, but Provide a good one, and it also has the advantage that it wouldn't slow down your code compared to instrumental profiling. So, first thing you set a timer in Linux OS X. This would be a profiling or real-time timer. Windows has has its own uh, timers that are called differently. Uh, your program will be interrupted, and this means especially in the context of, of R, it can happen anywhere. So basically you can't do any memory allocations because you don't know uh, if this will uh, still leave your internal data structures intact. So writing to a file would be an operation to the safe and this is what R is doing. So uh, on profile it. Uh, writes the call stack to, to a file in some format, which is then later analyzed by parsing the file, aggregating uh, functions or by lines, show call trees, uh, plain graphs. So, this is just a recap. Uh, you start with calling rprof, the default argument already is the file name. I tend to use this line for file and choose setting, which gives you more fine grained results. Then you run your code between the two yellow lines. Our prof null stops the profiling. Uh, and then you can work with the file to analyze it. So, uh, with the code that runs about one second, it captures by default 50 samples per second. So the file sizes are manageable, 30Ks are created in this example. 
um, the, the prop list package, which I'm, I'm going to show in an example later, is uh, by Winston Chan, I think, uh, has facilities to, to parse these. Blazor also has these, but uh, I just wanted to show this, this example, 65 samples collected in 1.3 uh, seconds. Well, for let me show you the visualization by Profis. So, what you see on the bottom is the timeline, the code execution. The, the timeline of the code execution and an overview of where the time is spent. And so, as we can see, uh, the code was about inserting a data frame into a SQLite database. Most of the time we're spending in this call function, and we have no idea where. So uh, we'd like to have a more detailed view of what's, what's happening in, in this call, where the time is spent, to be able to assess it, and how to, to, to so another useful view is the call graph, which I have expanded a bit. So it's unfortunate that, that, that you have really to click yourself through each node to, to expand it. I've talked to Vincent yesterday. Uh, we're looking into ways to, to improve this, but also here you see we have the bind rows call, which is a C function, uh, a C plus plus function, and no detail. Get back to my presentation. So, basically, both our profiler and native profiler, uh, for native sampling profiler, work pretty much the same. So, you start your timer, you write files in different formats. Uh, each time the program is interrupted, uh, You write the call stack and then you um, analyze the data after uh, finishing when you code. Now, for joint profiling, I think if we get to orchestrate starting and stopping the timers, if we can evolve the conflict, uh, find how we can combine this profile form into a unified. Um, you and uh, can then use existing tools either in R or perhaps cache grind to analyze them. This, this would be helpful for uh, seeing in code that uses both R and native code where it ends. So about orchestrating timers, this is an, an um, excerpt of, of the current implementation, the way it's done. It's a bit more brittle than, than I'd like it to be. So I hope we can discuss later how, how we can make things better. Now, I have a start profiler function that acts up the path. This will start R's profiler and then call this start profiler implementation function, which is shown below. Uh, this would look at the value of the signal handler installed by Arprof, record it, and start uh, the G profiler, Google profiler, with a hook. This filter and thread is actually 
designed to allow you to decide if you want to include a sample or not, we use it to call back into R whenever we're asked if we want to include. We say yes, that's the return one at the button. But before we agree, we just call into the old handle and call by R. So we don't need to. Uh, this is a hack, but we get the address of the digital plane and we're using it. Only thing we need to do, we need to restore our signal handle because R overrides it. Each time R collects a sample, it also overrides the signal handle. Maybe necessary in some uh, context, but we have to work around this particular feature. Okay. So, this project is at its very beginning. I, I haven't uh, had a chance to spend much time on it yet, but just to see. What it's currently able to do, uh, we have a code where we use our profiling facility, starts.profiler, and collects stack traces from both our and uh, the Google profile. Combine them into one data frame that has one row per sample, and they profile the, the call stack data in different formats. Um, at this point, these are opaque formats, but I'll be looking into combining these into proper uh, stack traces. Both formats. Now, challenges. I did uh, an absent minded upgrade, which broke my package. And it turned out to be that Perf Tools 2.5 just don't work for some reason. I haven't. Uh, had a chance yet to, to, to understand why this is, but somehow this approach I had working for 2.4 doesn't work now. This gives the, the opportunity to look into other profilers. So, so there are a few other solutions with uh, uh, different features. Uh, also, we might need, or we might want to look into how to provide an entry point for this, this profiler that would just record the stack trace and not set the handle or even that would allow us to capture or to write the current stack trace to a file of our choice without invoking the full uh, mechanics. I think it should be possible but uh, we need to work on the details here. Now reading the files that uh, Perf Tools are, are, is, is creating will be will involve looking into Go because they're uh, the tool that's reading them is the Go program Roman has, has done some work a couple of hours ago so, so this will be uh, helpful or of course if other profiles are using need to look into how to parse their formats. I'm not sure if, well, I doubt this, this will work on Windows out of your box, but, but we should be looking into making work at least on Linux on it and other specs. So for the common data format, my, my plan would be to, to enhance uh, the, the format used by Profits and, and by other uh, R code related to profiles, uh, maybe I can just just uh, this just fits right away or need to extend it. Another useful code format would be call grind. So there is code that, that exports R's format to call grind. Maybe we can make it just just work for the unified profiles. Now uh, my first case study will be an uh, improvement of reading and writing blobs, which currently involves copying or one unnecessary copy for both read and write. I'll uh, 
try to see if I, if I can identify the, the costs of this particular copy operation and then uh, see if, if, if this improves. Dplyr will be more involved because calling from R into C back into R back into C is just, just one uh, further complication of this exercise. And of course, what about EBR, what about Rengine, what about Faster, how, how can we... Uh, Enable this, or, or maybe we can we can use existing solutions from from other implementations to make this better. So that's it for now. The project will be there, and uh, like to to start a discussion. Yes. Thanks.